Hi, and welcome to the first tutorial video for the Magma Chamber Simulator. In this video, I'll show you how to install the Magma Chamber Simulator on your computer for the very first time. Previous versions of MCS did need to run using Excel 2011. We've actually updated the MCS, so now we run using Excel 2016 or 2019. Uh, the MCS will work on either. So the only minimum OS requirements you'll need to run the Magma Chamber Simulator are the minimum requirements for whatever version of Excel you're running. Code and documentation for the Magma Chamber Simulator can be downloaded from our website at mcs.geol.ucsb.edu. In order to download the software, navigate to the code and documentation page and you'll be able to download the MCS folder structure from there. So we've got our zip file. This is our downloaded MCS folder structure. In order to extract it, we double click and we have this MCS folder. I wouldn't delete the zip file just yet. I actually like to keep it on hand as a backup in case I might accidentally delete a file in the future. I have a backup copy of that file and I don't have to go back to the web page and re-download things. Now the MCS folder needs to be put into the documents folder on your computer. For those of you who aren't as familiar with a Mac, you can get to your documents folder by navigating through the finder window. That's this little happy face down here. You can click on that and you'll notice on the left hand side there will be some places for favorites. One of those is documents and this is actually your documents folder. So we're going to drop the MCS folder into there and that is step one. Step two, we need to open up that folder, go into the folder called MCS VBL code. We're going to open that and there are three files here. We want to open the one called MCS underscore phase EQ underscore 2019 A. Uh, now, the end of that file name may change depending on the version of the Magma Chamber Simulator that you've downloaded. Uh, we're making this video in December 2018, so if you're watching it in the future, the file name very well may not be this. So we can open up this Excel file now. And this is actually the Magma Chamber Simulator. We're opening that as we speak. There's this pop-up window that asks if we want to disable macros. We do not. We want to enable macros. And that's because the Magma Chamber Simulator is a macro. Uh, the worksheet in and of itself is a macro. It's not an add-in. It's written in Visual Basic. Uh, and because the worksheet itself is the macro, that means that when we're done using it, we don't want to save it. Uh, again, that's another reason why it's good to keep a backup copy of our folder structure on hand. So let's click Enable Macros. You'll also note that the next pop-up window lists the version of Excel. Uh, this means that it is a 100% requirement for you to keep your Excel up to date. Uh, if you don't yet have version 16.19 or of 2019 or the latest version of 2016, you will need to update uh, your version of Excel in order to work the Magma Chamber Simulator properly. So we can click OK. And there's another pop-up window. Uh, this is actually a little navigation safety uh, that has been built in. Uh, this is a security issue and we actually want this. This helps protect your Mac from viruses and this allows Excel to communicate with other programs. So we want to navigate until MCS is at the top. So starting at your documents folder, we're going to just select the MCS folder and click choose. So we want to choose the MCS folder. And unfortunately, you will need to do this every time we start up the Magma Chamber Simulator. It is slightly inconvenient, but it is much better than having a computer rampant with viruses. And that's essentially it we are finished installing the Magma Chamber Simulator. We can close it out and again, remember, don't save the file. Now there are two other files in here. Uh, we can talk about these a little bit and we'll talk about the rest of the folder structure. 
we've seen the Magma Chamber Simulator main file. There are two other files in this MCS VBL code folder. The first is the trace element engine. And this is actually a file that runs in the background when you're using the trace elements part of the Magma Chamber Simulator program. You do not want to touch this. Don't open it, don't disturb it in any way. Uh, the MCS trace elements program will contact this worksheet and run in the background while it's doing those calculations. Uh, the last file is the trace elements and isotopes part of the magma chamber simulator. It is a separate file. And what essentially happens is the major oxides will be in an output file according to the phase equilibria of output of the system. That output is then taken by the trace elements part and used as an input. Uh, with whatever partition coefficients you desire uh, to do the trace element calculations in line with the phase equilibria results. Uh, and it also does the isotopes at the same time. So again, we want to enable the macros. We have our welcome pop-up window. And again, we do need to give Excel permission to access the MCS folder. And then this is the trace element engine, uh, part of the magma chamber simulator. Uh, it looks a little bit complicated. We're gonna get to that in another tutorial video, but for now, we can go ahead and close. And again, don't save. Navigating back to the magma chamber simulator folder. The first folder we have is input and output. Uh, and what these are, are your input and output files. Your folder structure should come pre-populated with one that says prototype MES. Uh, that file will not work unless you rename it. The rest of the files that you'll see here up top are input files that I have previously made. And you'll notice that they all begin with the capital M, capital E, capital S, and an underscore. Every input file must begin with these four characters or the magma chamber simulator will not be able to read it. There's also a folder here called par files. Uh, those are files that store partition coefficients. Uh, so if you go to germ, you pick out your partition coefficients, you enter them into the magma chamber simulator, and then it'll give you the option, do you want to save these? And it will allow you to create a par file so that you don't have to re-input your partition coefficients every single time. It's very convenient. And then if you had any output files, they would also be located in this folder. The next set of folders we'll look at are the magma folder, the recharge folder, and the wall rock folder. So the magma chamber simulator runs using three separate subsystems, the magma, recharge, and the wall rock. Essentially, we run melts in each one of these subsystems and allow the, uh, the different melts batch terminals to communicate with each other via the magma chamber simulator. If you're like me and you like using the melts output files, uh, you like having those mineral compositions handy or the liquid composition handy, or you just like the way the melts.out file looks, you can still access them. They are for each individual subsystem in that particular folder. What I mean by that is melts.out files for the recharge subsystem will be located in that recharge folder. Uh, so what I typically do is at the end of every run, because these files do get written over, just like in standalone melts, I tend to create a folder and I might call it, you know, one December underscore test. And then I would take all of my melts output files and I would move them into that folder. And I typically do this for every subsystem and every run, just because it's handy to have them on hand. And if you don't transfer them over before you do the next run, you lose the data forever. Now you'll also notice that I left a file in here. In each one of these folders, there is a file called meltsinput.xsd. Here we can go ahead and delete these out of here. And you'll see that there's one of those files in each of these three folders. These files need to stay where they're at. 
there are also a melts input.xsd and a melts output.xsd just located in the MCS folder. Those also need to stay where they're at. If you move any of these files, uh, the magma chamber simulator will not work. Again, this is why it's nice to keep a folder structure on hand. Uh, next, the top four batch terminal files are our actual batch terminals for melts. Uh, they are labeled according to the version of melts that they correspond with. Uh, so the magma chamber simulator can run using P melts, uh, rhyolite melts 102, 110, or 120. If you're not quite sure which version you need to use, you can go to the melts website, and that's at melts.ofmresearch.org, navigate down to the bottom. And Mark Urso has kindly provided uh, some instruction as to how to navigate the different versions of melts, how to pick which one you choose, and things like that. So the last part of the folder structure are these folders at the bottom, and they start with XML and then an underscore. These are folders that temporary files actually pass through during the run. Uh, at the end of every run, you will have some files in your XML out file or folder and your XML processed folder, and that's perfectly okay. There's actually no additional information that are in these files that you need. Uh, the Magma Chamber Simulator at the beginning of every run empties out these folders. So if there was anything left over from the previous run, they're automatically cleared out. Um, I do find, however, that if I haven't manually emptied these folders out after a while, uh, the Magma Chamber Simulator does tend to get a little bit sluggish. So after every about 10 runs I go through and I manually empty out the XML processed and the XML out folders. And that concludes our tutorial on how to install the Magma Chamber Simulator for the very first time. In our next video, we'll show you how to put together an input file for a fractional crystallization run.